time now for Coming In Hot with Brent Wallace and former Ottawa Senators Bobby Ryan and Jason York. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. Brent Wallace alongside my two uh, 50 goal scorers, if you will, uh, Jason York and Bobby Ryan. If you, if you add them, yeah, if you add them up three years <laughs> over time, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yorkie, are you doing homework? What are you doing? Uh, I printed on his board today, printed off some game sheets. Oh, okay. Congrats. Usually don't bother because I can remember. I got, a, I got, I got one of those memories, Bob, where I can remember stuff. Like, how about this? When you golf, can you go back and do every hole in your head? Absolutely. Almost yeah, every just, time. Me too. And I can, and I'll even do the guys in my group shots and tell them what they shot and that it's, it's just this weird yeah. rain man thing I got going on. But I sure as shit can't remember to put the wash into the dryer after Lindsay leaves. And she's like, no, do that? Like I, it's a six hour uh, endeavor. Oh, I know. It's just way too complicated. Yeah. Can you just switch that over? Oh, I, I got it. <laughs> Never. <laughs> um, Congrats, but before we get underway, congrats, by the way, to Talk, our good friend who won uh, Best Up-and-Coming Breakthrough Artist at the Junos, and uh, Rachel Holman and her rink, who are world champion curlers once again. So uh, mm -hmm. big wins on the weekend. Of course, everybody predicted big wins for the Ottawa Senators in back-to-back -back games in New Jersey and Edmonton, right? I never doubted, not once have I doubted, Jonas Corpusalo. <laughs> well, he silenced a few on the weekend, didn't he? <laughs> but, yeah. I had a feeling. I, I, I was... I kind of figured they would win in Jersey, lose lose at home, coming home to play Edmonton. But um, boys had a weekend; they were good. I they got outplayed. Edmonton outplayed them um, for a large majority of that game. And the statistics, like when you look at the board, you would you would think Edmonton would win that game. Um, and I, I don't know if I was supposed to queue it up. I apologize, but here it is. Um, <laughs> when you when you look at the statistics outside of the power play, three versus you know three out of four and two out of three, um, Edmonton did a lot of things to win that game. Um, but what was the shot total again? Sorry, where is that? 36 16. Uh, right. Yeah. But the amount of block shots that Ottawa had, like, so you're looking at 50, 50 plus attempts towards the net. Mm. Like that's that's a that's a lot of zone time and possession time for Edmonton. But the boys, I mean, they were good. They were really yeah. good. Jacques Martin did the opposite, George. He said, I'm going, you know what? I don't care. I'm going back to back Corpusello. <laughs> good on him. Right, it just goes to show you, you you can play two games in a row, and yeah, you can this, it, it you can do it. Look, it's mm -hmm. been proven. Just nonsense. I'm so tired of this nonsense of how you can't play back to back games. So, well, like, think about this. Think about this because we're always wondering. Well, what what happened to those glory days when all these goalies were winning? Well, that's because they played like tons of games. You get into a rhythm. Mm -hmm. You you feel good. Like, I think it is nonsense. I, I, I do too, to a degree. Um, I think the days of seeing 70 and they actually were talking about it on the, on the broadcast about the days of goalies playing 70 plus games. And they went over the goalies yeah. that had, and I, I heard Kippersoff. I think I heard mm. Lundqvist and maybe Jaguar. I, I can't remember the names he used, but Luongo. Yeah. Um, yeah. But those, like, those days are probably gone um, in a league that's as up tempo as it is, but there's no reason that guys can't go back to back more often. That's for sure. You see the common denominator because it was noodles was talking. Noodles was always the backup. He goes, "Yeah, that guy played seventy, and we can, and then I played mine, and then he, yeah. then he talked to a I have one game a month. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's so good, oh, noodles. He does a good job. Uh, it was a good anyway. Good weekend. Uh, it's nice mm -hmm. to see uh, Corpusello as much as he's been beaten down. Just to just for him, but absolutely, yeah. While we praise him, is this the time we want him to start winning games for us? Guy, yeah. This guy can't get anything right. You're, just, <laughs> you're on him again. <laughs> hey, come guy. on. Give him a break. Yeah. Look, he's just, we've now he's dropped two spots day off in the right tankathon. Now. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. at home right now on a day off, just loving the fact that he got a back to back win, and we're going to talk about it. So. <laughs> win as many games as you can, no. buddy. <laughs> well, they're, they're still going to get, even if they go on a, a well, they got 12 games left. If they go on a, a, a torrid streak or when they're still gonna they're still gonna be in the lottery, which is where you want to be. I, they're not gonna get first. They gotta they have to really tank if they're gonna get first overall and like increase those odds. I think it's more important to get Corpus Allo feeling good about himself and finishing this season on a positive note because that'll 
yes, it's me. It's meaningless games and you're playing with no pressure, but I, I think it's really important for goalies to leave the season feeling good about yourself, getting, getting confident, getting the guys feeling good. To me, that's more important than moving up a couple spots in the draft because you're not, he's not going anywhere. He's that contract. You can't trade. So this, this is now the time to, to get him going the way you need him for next year. Okay. But is it false sense of security that now this is what we're going to see coming into next year? Absolutely. <laughs> but what, what other choice do you have? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> like hundred percent, but, but still it's, it's all we, it's all you got. It's, it's yeah. all you got. So it's like, let's work with them, get them. It's, you know what? A lot of it's between the years and for sure there's a te- technical issue with the amount of goals that are going in high blocker. But, um, you know, this is what the off season is going to be for the rest of the year. And, and, um, it, it like I, we, we talked about this before. There's been goalies that have played far worse. Mm-hmm. Well, well, and, right. and, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, 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 uh, and, and come back and turn things around. Like it can happen. Like, yeah, hey, and also you, you can't take that off of our goalies, man. You got to give them something. <laughs> and, yes. hey, you can't play worse. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> And like, hey, so, like, like let's and also too like come on the beginning of the year was a freaking gong show the amount of yeah. opportunities and breakdowns and breakaways so yeah. I think uh, you know it's it's it, it's very easy to pile it all on the goalies because you look at the save percentage but like I said this is this is the hand you have play the best you can with the rest of the season and 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 hopefully it works out next year. Yeah. So yeah. speaking of him, let's just get to our uh, hot and cold performer brought to you by DoorDash as always. Uh, get everything you need, even at the last minute. Choose what you want from where you want with Double Dash and DoorDash. Order from multiple restaurants or stores in the same delivery without additional delivery fees so everyone can get what they want or need. Uh, for a limited time, our listeners get 25% off and a zero delivery fees on your first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app. Enter code NATION25. That's 25% off up to a $10 value. Zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store. Case letters, by the way. Uh, offered valid in Canada, subject to change, terms apply. And guess who it is today? Ah, it's our buddy, Mr. Corpusallo. Two games, 56 shots. He's got a 9-11 save percentage. All we want is just a little over 9-10 save percentage, and we're rolling. We're good. We're rolling. And he's won, I think, four of his last five. Yeah. Well, yeah, he He's back! This, he, he was great this week, and he's back, and... It's nice to have him instead of being the cold performer. We we get to yeah. talk about him in the positive side. <laughs> yeah. The guy's had a tough go. He knows it. everybody knows it. It's 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 nice to change it around. He made some really, really big saves too. I felt Just, like that was the first one, and I may be off by one that he stole a game. Uh he stole a couple other early in the year. If I if I ever call I, I remember we talked about him one week like completely stealing a game, yeah. but they, yeah. when you're talking about the amount of games in between, then it's a lot. So um mm-hmm. Yeah, the the Sens don't have a goaltender that's going to steal them any games right now. But for him to do that on the weekend was, yeah. it was I was I was jacked up for him. <laughs> and here's the, like I, my fiance is from the south and knows very little about hockey, and she's like, I feel like you're always talking about the goaltending. And I said, Well, <laughs> so um, I had the game on last night, and she's kind of darting around the house, and she said, Are the Sens winning? And I said, They are. So she kind of stopped for a second, was like, What's the score? I said, They got outshot thirty six to sixteen, and they're winning. Five two. She goes. They only gave up two goals on that many shots. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So good on him because it was nice to be like, "Yep, he he's playing very very well." Well, just 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 picture if if you got shit kicked by New Jersey, Edmonton came in and rolled over you. Just imagine the amount of negativity in the city right now, and just the piling on over. What are we gonna do? What's gonna go on? Like, it's just a horrible way to end the season. So. Mm-hmm. I get, I get the whole lottery thing, but to me, this is, this is more, this is more important to, to, like I said before. I agree. Um, Wally, do you have the lottery odds up today yet? Uh, yeah. Who, I was going to, I want to see where this kid Celebrini is going to be today. I, there, is there any chance that they let him go to San Jose? <laughs> we, they've always talked about this thing being rigged in some sense, it's, but it's not, <laughs> it's not, but, um, well, can, but why they're like, start hey, we, this we, conspiracy we, theory. Hey, I'm just thinking they're sitting there right now going, sometimes there's just a team that's out there. We need this kid in a nice big market. <laughs> I'm I, just wondering. I just simmed the lottery. Uh, Calgary just jumped 10 spots to take number one. And now we got him in a Canadian market. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, four. All I know all I know is if he goes to Chicago, there's going to be some people just losing their marbles. <laughs> yeah. 
So, so would, okay. So of all the teams that are on the list, where where can he go? So you don't want him to go to San Jose because no one no one wants anybody to go to San Jose. Chicago's already got Bedard. Pittsburgh had enough number one picks. Who I, I would love to see him in Anaheim or Arizona. Another southern market team that's been that has some playoff success. San Jose does too, but man, when you're out there, and I know you guys have made the trip, San Jose's just forgotten on that yep. trip, aren't they? They're that game that you throw in on the way home and you fly out of Oakland and you get on the bird and get out of there. But like there's a and and they have a good fan base and people show up, but I don't know. When you're in Anaheim, you're playing in Anaheim, York, you got LA, there's a rivalry already built in. It just feels mm-hmm. like a different place there, there there was a, there was a time when san jose like we kept thinking there remember we'd always think they're going to win this is their year this is their yeah. year all those joe thornton patrick marlowe years you just thought they just could never quite get it done and they were and now they're rebuilding but yeah that's always been a it's always been a pretty good hockey market there um, yeah they, they're a good I, I don't know they just feel forgotten me but i would they haven't had a high pick like a very high pick in a while so i don't know it would be interesting to see but i would love to see them in anaheim to, to infuse that series because that series has gotten a little stale between LA and Anaheim or in Arizona yeah. where they're like, Hey, we're now we got a reason for the brand new building and you keep a team in Scottsdale. So the boys can go to the old clubs <laughs> down, downtown, <laughs> keep, keep it fresh. Did you imagine though? He goes to Arizona. Welcome to the NHL, son. You're going to play in front of 5,000 people now. Oh, geez. I yeah. played in front of yeah. more people last year. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Boston view or whatever it is. holds more people. Exactly. Well, it's, uh, I was talking to my kid about, uh, I was like, hey, if you could pick any D1 school to go to, who would you like to, whatever. And he didn't list Arizona. I go, Arizona would be cool. He goes, yeah, I could play in an NHL rink. I go, <laughs> well, I go, there's a few places that are actually quite nice outside of that, like uh, Nodak, uh, North Dakota. But yeah, I think, mm-hmm. doesn't BC or BU have a really nice old barn? I can't remember which one it is. Harvard was absolutely oh, incredible. That was a great time to skate there. We used to practice there every now and again. I think maybe over my career with Ottawa, it happened once or twice, but Anaheim did as well, and we were blown away by that rank. Yeah, it was pretty we, neat. I did one we, practice there with you guys. I think I, I think if I'm a kid right now, I'm picking Arizona State. Yeah, I think it'd be fun. Um, all right, speaking of I'd, winning. I'd like to be five years younger than a kid picking right now and see if the SEC starts to put hockey in. Yes. Yeah. I heard it's coming. I heard they're it's expanding coming. more south. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, I said it's giveaway week on the show, and look what we got. The Salty Wally is up for grabs. Just going to ruin somebody's day right out of the gate, huh, Wally? <laughs> it's, it's, it's flying off shelves. It's, it, you can't keep this in stock. Uh, so all you got to do, this simple, uh, we're, I'll announce the winner tomorrow. Just go uh, to Twitter or X, depending on how you want to call it, uh, and then just tweet at us, I'm coming in hot, hashtag. I'm coming in hot. And then we'll uh, announce a winner in tomorrow's show. We're giving away stuff every day this week. Uh, it's Bobby's uh, bonus. So, uh, yeah. sounds yeah. about right. <laughs> yeah. There's too, many, gonna... there's too much accounting to get the uh, US dollar. So we uh, just decided to keep it. Hey, we're going to have, we're going to have to think of something special for, for this bad boy right here. How do I get this? <laughs> you wouldn't be a weatherman. Oh, there we go. Give the people, people what they want. Tell the oh, nation it's, network to get it going. This is the only of one of its kind on planet Earth right now. I, I'm thinking we could have a charity auction for this. Donate all the money to a nice charity. I uh, think DIFD. Uh, there we go. There we yeah, go. Done. But uh, I just By the, the way, demands. I think it's Luke Richardson's birthday today or tomorrow. Anyway. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, Big Luke. Well, happy birthday, Luke. Uh, I will double check that as we get going here. Uh, also, more stuff to chat about. Let's just get into uh, taking care of some business while we're at it. Um, this show proudly presented by Betway. Uh, go to betway.ca. Uh, bet your way with Betway. Must be 19 plus. Please play responsibly. Uh, member of the iGaming Ontario Network. As well as our good friends at BEI, Bonisher Excavating Incorporated, the heavy civil general contractor in both the public and the private sectors. So when planning your next project, consider BEI for your supply needs. That includes all things from equipment rentals to haulage and floating. Uh, if you got it, they can move it. You can find them at BonisherExcavating.com or at 613-432-1120. Um, and as always, please slow down in construction zones. And BEI, thank you for helping to shape the Ottawa Valley. 
Well, if you want a great night's sleep or a really good pregame nap, you got to try Douglas Mattress. Named Canada's best mattress on Canadian living, unrivaled comfort and feel. It's got that motion isolation, sleeps cool, relieves pressure points, and it's a great value. Loved by more than 200,000 Canadians and over 10,000 five-star reviews. You can order online very easily. Free shipping and get Douglas delivered right to your door in one to four business days. Every mattress comes with that free comfort sleep bundle, pillow, sheets, mattress protector. Order your Douglas today. Uh, don't forget about that 365 night sleep trial. And you can find it at douglas.ca slash CIH. I think you'd be a great mascot for Douglas. Anyway. What, uh, wear, what, what do you think would be Douglas mattress would wear though? Like just like a... We'll figure it out. Uh, time news, for Did You News work coming. <laughs> Brought to you by Wendy's. Uh, and the Wendy's Daily Face-Off Survivor Pool. The only thing sweeter than the taste of victory is starting your day with the new Cinnabon pull aparts from Wendy's. They have Cinnabon now at Wendy's. I don't know I don't know oh, if you people are excited nice. enough. But Stay away from that, Wally. <laughs> <laughs> There's no reason there. you can't have both now at Wendy's and Daily Face-Off Fantasy as they're giving away... Is they're giving you a chance to win weekly prizes all season long. And hey, even if you make a few wrong picks, at least you know heading to Wendy's right now for a $5 Cinnabon pull-apart and a small coffee is a great choice. Sign up for the Daily Faceoff Survivor Pool today, sponsored by Wendy's and the Wendy's app. All right, here it is. Jacob Chikrin had two power play goals against the Oilers, just the fifth defenseman in sense history to score two power play goals in the same game, and the first since Max Lejoie in 2018. Hasn't happened very often. Um Wade Redden, I think, had 56 or 58 power play goals. Never had two in wow. one game. Um, a very uh, select few, if you will. Yeah, he finds – well, he's got some good chemistry on that seam pass with Drake, but he owes Drake a oh, yes. couple yeah. stick taps there. Those were two incredible, oh, wow. incredible passes. But he's got a – man, his – I mean, we've talked about a shot in the past. He's got a great release. Not just a one-timer. The way he walks the line and gets that shot through, Yorkie is a D. What a special mm. talent like that is just to find the way to get that shot to the net. Um, yeah. It's on it's, it's auto. Funny, the names on those – the names on that list, I'm like, uh, who? Brendan <laughs> Bell. <laughs> the Bell of beauty, eh? Beller. I love that guy, but you you're thinking with Carlson and Chara and all yeah. these guys that have probably been um, whoever else, right? Sanderson, maybe, or not Sa Shabbat, Shabbat yeah. at some point through his career has had some, yep. it just, it's a pretty, co pretty cool company. Uh, Chikrin stick too. Like he gets that up in a hurry. Like his, his one timer from that spot on the dot on the far side there, it's just on auto shelf. <laughs> like it's a great, He's got one of the best one timers as for that seam pass, but I don't know about you guys. Drake Batherson was the best player on the ice yesterday. Oh my god, mm -hmm. wasn't even close. Both yeah. teams, both teams. That when he's he's feeling something special right now because when he gets the puck on his stick, it's incredible. Like he got the best hands on the ice. Like people have no Bob. You and I were talking about this before the show. That saucer he pulled off when he went, he elevated over the shin pads. And then landed it right on Chikrin stick. That is way, way harder than that looks on the other one, where he had to push out of the traffic, get some time and space. And again, he sauced it over. But other plays too, when he's holding pucks, he's making mm -hmm. plays. He's and the way he's ripping it right now. Yeah, this is. Uh, it's like he's going to another level. It's funny when we talk about the sauce pass. It reminds me of um, we when when you know that. As soon as, like, you can tell as soon as you throw a sauce pass, right? Whether it's going to wobble just a touch or if it's going to just lay perfectly flat. Both of those were perfect. And it's like, reminds me of Matthew Shane, who had very, very good little sauce plays in tight. He was very good at that. He used to, as soon as he would release it and it was perfect, you would just hear him go, pancake. Because <laughs> he knew. <laughs> so, as soon as Drake let those go, that's what immediately where my mind went. I was like, pancake. <laughs> they were perfectly oh. placed. And I was, give him a little more credit on the second goal because he gets that puck from below the goal line from Brady. That right there is an immediate turn and shoot for most guys, right? Yeah. You got you got an immediate look at the net there for a freebie. And what he does is he just, like, the poise to turn, when you know that you're in the middle of three guys there, right? One's below a Brady, but you got three guys and nobody's quite within mm -hmm. reach. To turn and pull your backhand uh, on your backside out of there, and then to throw that pass, like that's, there's not many guys that do that. That was, that was a very poised play. When you look at this, the sense power play now is starting to click a lot better. 
and it seems he's always in the middle of everything. And mm-hmm. he's had a lot of great looks, like the one you described when he takes it down, when he push pulls it to the net like that. He just he's so smooth, like his movements with the puck. But he, uh, man, I'd say his hands. I don't know if anybody on the team has better hands than him. Like they're to me, no. they're that like they're Timmy's Timmy. Like he's edge work, skating, dynamic. Yeah. But I, I take Drake's hands as best on the team right now. If I was to say who, oh has yeah, the best. yeah, Ab- absolutely. Timmy's Timmy's um, they're just such different players. But Timmy's dynamic and has some hands and and some shifty moves. But as far as like. So it's a much harder job for Drake because I can relate to him. He skates like I did a little bit. Um, it's a, He's got to find craftier ways to beat guys than a guy like Timmy will. Uh, yeah. So he's developed that over the years incredibly well. You know what I like? Because he's sick. He's about 6'3". When he goes into the corners, uh, he's got that long. It looks. I don't know how long his stick is, but it looks long. He can turn and then take the pressure feel it and then spin off it. And that's tough when you're a defenseman, when you've got a big guy that's long. Um, and then, Bob, I remember watching, you were good at that too. You can accept the contact, spin off, make your plays. And on the one, on the one chicken goal, that's what he did. He like turned, made some space. And that's the thing. Like you can't, you can't teach size and long. You either have it or you don't. And, and you know, who? I'll throw an old school name at you. A guy that uh, was really, kind of similar to Drake, the way he made passes. You remember, do you remember Jason Allison a little bit before you? Oh team? yeah. Yeah. Like he right shot guy. He was long, not the best skater, but he was really slick and he was so good. Like very similar plays like that. Yeah. Reminds, reminds me a lot of how Batherson distributes the puck. Can you, can you, I, I just saw the uh, highlights. Can you bring the second power play goal up? The one where he's in the middle. Look at the poise on this one. Like right there. 90% of guys are shooting that he catches that puck and turns himself out of like, look, look where he is. That's a shooter's puck. Like I'm shooting that all day and thinking nothing of it because you're, you're inside the dots 15 feet away and you can beat a goalie there all day, but he just pulls guys to him and then goes, oh, I'm just going to um, pancake. <laughs> who's the, uh, who's yeah. the older, who's, who's the, the uh, oiler. Go back to that clip, Gavin. One of the oiler guys just, <laughs> he's just swimming on the ice right now. Let's step yeah. forward. What? Yeah. Oh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? Take something away. Get, well, oh, that's Nuge and Hopkins. That's the Nuge. Just yeah. made the Nuge look silly. He did. <laughs> what a play. Yeah. What a play. So anyways, to me, yeah, Vincent is- looked a little Ottawa-ish there, right? Calvin yeah, Pickard that? had like a 719 save percentage in that game. Guys were they just didn't play well defensively. Well, no. They gave up 16 shots, but they just gave up these these plays. I played Ottawa with just I yeah. played with Pix. He might be one of the funniest guys. Like oh, I yeah? I, I got all day for that guy. <laughs> I, if you ever just want to like if I could ISO cam some of the players that I played with and just be like, I wonder what this guy's doing right now, Pix is absolutely on my list. Like I loved him. Where would you have played with Calvin Pickard? Detroit. So he, he was kind of That's our right. third, second. Uh, but the COVID year, there were some, you know, all those different regulations. You were carrying more guys. And yes. Um, yeah. He he just the happiest guy to be in the NHL. Um, loved loved his attitude. What's Picks doing after giving up four on 16? Always oh, having a hog and dawes on the bird. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> No big deal. Yeah. No big deal. <laughs> oh god. That's how you gotta be though. It, especially in a Canadian, you gotta you got you can't you gotta just bury it and move on. Yeah, it is but true. Ottawa did Ottawa did the opposite. Everything happened to Edmonton, which usually happens to Ottawa. It's like, yeah, you're you let in four on sixteen, you decide to play the goalie back to back, just you score on your opportunities. <laughs> That never happens for Ottawa. Like they've had a nice little stretch lately. Like you go back to some of those games they've lost. They mm-hmm. played pretty well. They just couldn't score. Now all of a sudden, too little, yeah. too late. But still, like I said, all you can do is is deal with what you have, and and uh, you know, good good sign for Corpusella for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, by the way, what we didn't talk about Drake's two goals that he scored this weekend, like the New Jersey backhand and the one he it's went crazy. short side against uh in edmonton or against edmonton those are fantastic goals yeah i love the pull and shoot he's got he's got like when you can when you have the ability and a lot of guys do it um and a lot of guys have the ability to change the angle that way but his his sticks longer because he doesn't skate as fast so he's changing the angle quite a bit but that was just a great shot 
and that I mean, the backhand was ridiculous. Like that was that was straight vertical in on in tight on the goal. It was yeah. pretty impressive. It was good. I just I bet you I bet you because you you look at guys on bad teams and and when you lose games, whatever five four six three, a lot of guys will get their cookies in those games, right? They get the goal or two and a and a loss. I wish I had the stats in front of me. You look at Batherson's goals and points he's been involved in this year. A lot of times they're in meaningful times and games when you're winning. Like he's had his hands in on a, on a bunch of the overtime goals this year, games mm-hmm. like yesterday, like key times and key games where like, I think he's got a chance to be when Ottawa takes the, that next step and finally does become a playoff team to be a, to be a big game player. Like in when it, when it really counts. I'd I also I like to point out that you guys have ruined tomorrow's show as I was going to discuss Drake Batherson. But anyway, uh, keep at it. I'm done. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see this and get get all get all big head. No, well, he. I did text him today. Uh, I wanted him to come on, but he's got some uh, some stuff. He said I had a full day today. I can't make it, but uh, mm, soon we'll get him on. Uh, in his last 17 games, eight goals, 16 points, plus two, three power play goals, one game winner. Um, I, I just, I, I just like the way he plays the game. I guess that's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. We agree. That uh, that shirt's looking pretty good on you there, Wally. White's your, I think white's your color. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say. You can get this shirt, by the way, in gray or black if you wish. Uh, just go to the nationgear.ca store and order up. Oh, look at that. Um, there it all is. Multiple and new stuff on its way as the uh, the pin dick has been sent to the shirt makers. I don't know if it's been approved, but it has been sent. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm already. I've got one done. I've got the prototype done. I showed it earlier. I'll I'll produce a few for. We'll do like limited limited editions. And we'll have some. We'll have some fun with it. We'll I auction them it. off. On, we'll auction them off on the show. It's good. You know, make them make it so it's in demand. Like we'll just do ten of them, and there'll be only ten in circulation. It'll be something. It'll be like a keepsake. They'll be all over Franklin, Tennessee. Send me a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> all the kids running around. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I want. Okay. I can you order the toddler sizes, please? Just piss everybody <laughs> off out here. A little onesie. Little onesie. Don't be a pendick. Oh. <laughs> Could just see it now. Um, oh, by the way, yesterday, sh- just want to send a congratulations out to Doc Chow, who, mm-hmm. by the way, if you hadn't heard, was named into the Ring of Honor. Um, and I think both of you have experienced at some point mm-hmm. the, I guess, the hands of Doc Chow trying to fix you guys and put you back together. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I spent a lot of time with him <laughs> putting hands back together. So, uh <laughs> That guy is the happiest guy in the world. I love him. Um, I loved all the time that I got to spend with him. We were seeing specialists together for my hands, obviously. Um, But just just like every single day, loved coming to the rank. It was like a lot of times at the end of a long work day, he was coming to the rank, right? Because that's it's a different job from his normal. And he was kind of moving on from that kind of stuff. But unbelievable person, just happy, wanted to talk about motorcycles and and all sorts of things, non-hockey. I I loved him. Um, so congratulations, because he's one of the good ones. I remember him coming to the game. You talk about the motorcycle. He he would wear those leather motorcycle boots with his suit sometimes. Like yep. he, it was yep. so good. It was amazing. I remember yeah. that too. Yeah, I had those cool boots on. I spent a lot of time with him in the summer because I would stay here in the summers, obviously being from Ottawa. And uh, yeah, I got a chance to spend some time with him too because he's he's a day one guy. Um, but yeah, like you said, Bob, those. Having positive people around that are just always happy. It's just mm-hmm. infectious. And I thought it was a great touch. Great touch yeah. um, to honor a guy that's been day one and just a great guy, great person, and so important behind the scenes. I, I, I agree. I think the sends new ownership and the people that are making the decisions and these type of things have absolutely nailed it across the board since they've taken over. 100%. Yeah. Like he's the one guy, as you say, always, always happy to be around, but always had time. For even for us, like there's been times where I've gone like, I don't can't move my shoulder, and he'd like just come in and take a quick look, and they just always he just wants to help you. That's what I always yeah. liked about him. He um, certainly does. 
and the fact he's still alive after having like three motorcycle accidents crazy he's a couple bad yeah. ones too they're like not yes. yeah not like yes. hey i was trying to park and i tipped over he's had a couple of real bad ones so so yeah. so he told me the story he's in the hospital during his first one and he goes doctors make the worst patients because he was up to hooked up to all these tubes. He started pulling them all out. He's like, ah, <laughs> like, I don't need this. I don't need this. I don't need this. He's reading his charts and like, this isn't right. That's so uh, good. I could he see would that be such him. a pain in the ass. I could see it now. Yep. yep. Uh, anyway, congrats to Doc Chow. Uh, glad to see you getting the recognition and enjoy your retirement because I know he's moving on. But the senators, by the way, people don't understand the senators have arguably one of the best medical staffs in all the National Hockey League. Their other guy, Dr. Mark Obrey, is in the International Ice Hockey Hall of Fame uh, mm -hmm. for the work he's done I, on concussions. I didn't know that. Obrey is a, he's a really good person. I, and yeah. the best part is they're all really good people, not just accomplished. Um, really yeah. good people. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. And that's why they're always with Team Canada at the World Championships or whatever. They're just they're just really good at what they do. So yeah. uh, very fortunate for all the doctors they've had in Ottawa, for sure. Doc, Doc Henry, the team dentist, has been there since I was there. He's an yeah. awesome guy. I still go see him. Dr. Cregan, family doctor for all the players. No, they've got a great medical staff. And Doc Aubrey, Bob, I've he's such a beauty. Just such yeah. a good guy. I've seen him so many times. I love Doc one Cregan, with, too. Awesome yeah, person. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. one with he's, Cregan he's, is he uh, he played at Cornell. So he's like he was an union. accomplished hockey player. Played at um, Union. Sorry, Union. Uh, yeah. Very good hockey player. So he understands all that side of it as well. Um, mm -hmm. Again, just. And he's always been at the world championships or something for uh for team canada anyway and then of course jerry town and uh jared dom mitchy all of them like so like head to toe incredible yes so the thing about jerry is that um my kid has gone to him and when he goes i hand i can't move my hand or something my wrist whatever jerry goes two seconds in he goes did you change your stick and he's like yeah he says because you changed your stick i'm like are you kidding like we That's call incredible. him the magician the stuff Jerry's he just kid. he just knows it's wild yeah. anyway yeah. i i was blown away in the difference between where i had come from to what i was getting and then again from what i was getting to where i went at the end without saying the organizations there we can figure them out but in ottawa bar none the best i had seen bar none yeah. do they offer you tortal in uh, ottawa no you can't get anything in ottawa that's anything what yeah nothing no, I, I and they had to give it to me eventually because of the hand being so bad and then freezing and everything like that. Um, but if you unless it's like it, like they make the call, guys would always say, this yeah. is bothering me. Can I do it? And they'd be like, nope, Advil, whatever. Stronger Advil. Yeah. Good luck. Because um, if you're hurt, they're not giving it to you unless it's the only way you can play. And like I had to go through it with my hands, obviously. Uh, but Doc Chow and I spent a ton of time together freezing my hands with the Marcane and the Lidocaine and whatever it was, like every game. <laughs> we always made, I always was like, how's the bedside manner today? Because he would always be really happy and really go lucky. But I was like, are you going to jam it in there? Or can we, like, can we have a discussion? <laughs> first? And he'd be like, no, 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 I'm going to take it easy. <laughs> like, okay. We have a coffee. Yeah. yeah. But no, that's the same thing. It was all the same um, across the board with, um, with the meds, they handled it incredibly well. Cause I was a, yeah. I was a sleep deprived person. Um, and when I had played in Ambien, it was just, you would walk off the plane. Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> you, you call that Anaheim Ambien. Cause you, yeah. Oh, sorry. You had, had <laughs> them, like, yeah. Yeah. When I played in Ambien, but no, honestly that was, <laughs> and I think that's the difference between us and Canada a little bit. And then I heard it changed oh, everywhere. God. Um, I think we saw that change yeah. in the league, but when I got to, um, Ottawa, they were like, well, let's figure out what's going on and work on a different way to do it. And oh. yeah. They're, when I was in An when I was in Anaheim, it was like, oh, you're hurt? Okay, come on here. I'm going to give you some cortisone. Cortisone. Everything was yeah. cortisone. Mm -hmm. well, we're calling them like Dr. Cortisone. It's, 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 it's crazy. And crazy. Like, oh, yeah. It's, it's the worst thing you can do. Yep, that's, uh, uh, that's supposed to be a last resort, not a not a. We'll get you back out there tomorrow. <laughs> I, I pulled I pulled my groin in training camp, and they wanted to shoot it with cortisone. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> no, I'll see you for game one. <laughs> like third day, of tra yeah. Let's just get a little cortisone in here. You know, help speed up the healing here and get you back a little quicker. I'm like, no. And they ended up doing it. And now, now, like you, you're older, and it's like, oh, why do I have this lump in my groin? <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I laugh. I, I was at the world championship with the doc Chow and I was sick for a couple of days. We we're in like, I don't, uh, I, I think we're in Slovakia and I'm like, I, I don't really want to go to the drugstore. I don't know what's going on. So I'm like, do you have anything just to get me through this head cold or whatever? And I'm hoping that he, like, I'm thinking he's going to come out with some, something that you guys have in the back that will just perk me right up. He hands me a bag of vitamin C and says, take as many of these as you can mm -hmm. every day. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> what, what am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> thanks. But, yeah. I thought for sure I was getting some good stuff. No. Nope. Oh, nope. Damn it. Uh, all right. Back to the sense, if you will. Uh, so, but there's tw uh, 12 games left. I'm getting, I, I don't know what, are we seeing an identity with this team? I don't, every time I look for something, a trend, I don't get one. So I don't know yet where we're at with this group. That's good. It's game 70. <laughs> That's what you want. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. It's a big week coming up. They got Buffalo Wednesday. They got Chicago Thursday. Winnipeg. So coming teams up. below them, they might, well, Buffalo's ahead of them, I guess. So um, where are we on that schedule? Just trying to, figure. okay. Buffalo's on the road, right? Yeah. yeah. Then home yeah. to Chicago and then in Winnipeg. That's a tough three and four going to Winnipeg on the tail end of that. Is that a night game in Winnipeg? Yeah, 7 p.m. Yeah. It's, a, it's actually a tough schedule. And I know you're talking about Buffalo and Chicago, but that's a, that's a tough little travel week. Down and back, game, and right out. You still got to play the games. Like, I know we yeah. talked about Chicago being last or whatever. You still got to play the game. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Chicago's actually playing a little better. I, I had them on the other night. I was watching Tyler Johnson, who's a good yep. friend. Um, they, they looked pretty good the other night. I can't remember who they were playing. Um, Bedard was all over the ice. We had the so. three points or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're not bad. They're just, they're just in a rebuild. They got, they got some guys that can still play. So, um, got a tough week out of them. And I always go to Winnipeg. I, I don't know why it wasn't even the city. It was the flight to Winnipeg for one game that bothered me so much. And I think it was because I did the down and back early in my stay there in preseason. I was like, I never want to make this flight again. <laughs> so, um, uh, Chicago has won, uh, four of their last seven or five of the last, uh, nine. Hmm, but the problem yeah. is they don't, they can't, Either they score a lot or they don't. They've been shut out three times in the last uh, nine games, four times in like in the last ten. Well, you know what? I'm I'm running Corpus Allo against them then. Shut them down. That should be your Forsberg game. You can't go back to. Oh wait, yes you can. Yep. I, run them. I think they run them. They play in the last twelve games. If you ask me. <laughs> Maybe. But, yeah. It's a um. Uh, you know what I forgot to mention. You know, I forgot to mention, looked pretty good in that Edmonton game. Your old buddy, the Worm. The Worm, because he, he still gets around, doesn't he? It's weird because he's not fast, but he's like appears and he strips, steals pucks. He's he's got a great stick. Like he's very, yeah, yeah, he's very, and he, he's he's got a long reach, right? The Worm, his arms are forever long, um, and he just he skates just fast enough to arrive on time. How old is he now? I'm Perry. thirty-six. He'll be turning. God, will he be turning 39? I'll look it up. Or 38. I think he's coming up. Yeah, he'll be 38. He's, he's an 03. 05. Um, yeah, he's an 85. 03 draft. So oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, 1985, May yeah. 16th. But he's going to be turning 38. And I'm telling Thir you. This no, he's turning 39. He's 38 he? right now. Wow. Yeah. There's there's guys that they're going to have to completely carry out of the league, and he is one of them. <laughs> like he, he, just, he just will continue to come back year after year. That's funny, but yeah, good player, man. I loved playing with him. Loved playing with him. Does he accept any role that's given to him, if you will? He he's a yeah. Hart Trophy winner, right? And yeah. he's no but, care in the world. Did he score fifty? I think he scored fifty. He scored fifty. Yeah. Um, no care in the world. He you, wants to be on the ice. And gets really? off, and I didn't shoot a puck for the last month of that season. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was on. Like I think he scored nineteen in his last twenty-one. If if I or something. I can't remember the numbers, but when he caught fire, um, it, they were going in from everywhere and like our, our line was good, but I remember the amount of shots that we were looking off to get him to that number, especially for like the last 10. And we'd come back to the bench and be like, would you two shoot? And we're like, nope, <laughs> nope. Someone's getting 50 and it's out of reach for us. He had a career high 290 shots that year. 
Yeah, he stood in front of the net with the best of them. He was so good in that five feet circle, and still is. Uh, yeah. Eh? Okay. Uh, oh, uh, I, something we got to get to before we uh, before I forget. Uh, since we don't have a lock of the day today, which I would have been interested, would all of you have picked Edmonton or both of you have picked Edmonton yesterday against the Sens? Uh, on a back to back, coming off a win on the road, yes. <laughs> against the against an Oiler team that just yeah. lost in Toronto. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I would have. Yep. Yeah, me too. Um, <laughs> so we've got uh, in our Betway segment today, which is uh, our show is always proudly presented by Betway. Bet your way with Betway. Uh, must be uh, 19 plus. Please play responsibly. Is who's going to win the Atlantic Division? Is it Florida with 11 games left or Boston with 10 games left? Both have 97 points. Hmm. I don't know. I like both teams so much. Um I'd love to see a schedule right now. I was just going to say the same thing. Do I, does anybody have any daunting trips left or, you, you know, I, they I, like the, what does the internet not work at your house? Well, you got the, uh, I'm ordering the, golf balls. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do they have your name on them? Do, do they yeah, say BFR? No, they just say BR. I'm going to put the F in right now. Um, <laughs> I'm going to take the Florida Panthers. I, I, I just think they're, I mean, you can say the same about Boston because the amount of points they have, but they're Florida's just a wagon and they got a game in hand. Yeah. And let's be honest, Boston is destined to play Toronto in the first round just to get all the Leaf fans all anxious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> first yes. round matchup with Boston. Yep. But if I was Toronto, I, I would want to play Boston. I'd want no part of Florida in the first round. No part of those guys. None of them. Yeah. 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 I, I'll, I'll, I, I think Florida is going to win. I th I, th I just think they're a better team. I think some Toronto Maple Leafs are going to have some money on the board for whoever's playing uh, Boston towards the end of the season. Yeah. So go, 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 out, go out and beat Boston, please. <laughs> uh, just quickly, I just they play. Uh, oh, hang on. I just got to make sure. Well, just if you're while you're looking, while you, it's it, yeah, because yeah, you think about the Leaf guys, if they. You get. I think now it's actually better to start open up on the road in the playoffs because all you got to go in there is steal one. So if I if, if I'm Toronto, all the pressure's on Boston. I, I I'd want to play them. Florida is an interesting schedule. Just they play Detroit. in Philly. Uh, we had sorry, one. they played in Philly. They play in Boston on the 26th, which is tomorrow. Or at home to Boston. I'm sorry, home to the Islanders, home to the Wings, on the road against the Leafs, Habs, Sens, Bruins. And then uh, home to the Sens, Jackets, Sabres, and Leafs. I like their chances of winning that division. Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah. Two big games against the Bruins, though. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I they're just hard to bet against for me. Bobrovsky's back. They're, what do you, what, they're so deep. What do you guys think about uh, after? I, because I don't watch a lot of Edmonton after I watch I watch some of the Edmonton Toronto game and then watch them against. Do you guys think they're good enough to come out of the West? Edmonton? Yeah. No, but no. I like Colorado. But then I watched Colorado give up four to Pittsburgh and then come mm -hmm. back and win five four in overtime. Mm -hmm. I, I, I guess I every team say. has one of those moments. Yeah, they. I'm not reading into that very often. It has it happens from time to time to every single team, right? But yeah, um, yeah. I I don't like Edmonton defensively. I just that's just me. And I I know their goalie's been good for him this year. I just I don't think he stacks up comparatively to some of the other goaltenders in that division when you look at them breaking down with the, with what they give up defensively, yeah. like you had just said. Yeah, I, I got a I got a hard time betting against Colorado the way Nate McKinnon's going this year. That guy's on a mission. Why, Why doesn't you, Vancouver you to, get any attention? Uh, I don't know. Demko's phenomenal, um, and they <laughs> score. But I don't know. Again, you just think of certain teams that don't have the identity of a, what a playoff team is. Big, imposing, and you look at Quinn Hughes and Elias Pettersson, and you're like, they're not a playoff team. I don't agree with that, I, and I'm not saying that. Yeah. I'm just that's I what you're people saying. seem to. Um, they're. I mean, they're they're going to be a tough out for sure, but. When I look at who the deepest team, like Vegas is going to be 20 million over the cap by the time this starts. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Well, right? look, look at it this way. Who's, who's Vancouver's number one center? Brock Besser. No, he's a winger. Is, is it, is it Elias Peterson? Is JT Miller? 
J- it's gotta be J- Who, J- whoever it is, it's just you can't. If you're going head to head, Nate McKinnon's going to eat up whoever it is. I don't know, uh, but do. Nate McKinnon's a special player. Let's. Well, well, you course. can shut down. Why, you can shut. Right. You can shut down one guy and still win a series, or you can allow one guy to have nine points and still win a series. You know what I'm saying? Like they got the- Vancouver has one loss in the last nine games. They're eight, one and one. So that'd be ten games. Seven, one and one. I'm sorry, nine games. We'll like, see. They, I don't know. They don't give up. They don't give up many goals. They've allowed more than three goals just once in that stretch. And they made some hard to give up goals like, when you have the puck the whole game. So yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I look at their D. I, uh, Zadorov, who they have back on there. I like Quinn Hughes a lot. I like he's a great player. I just I, I just the way McKinnon, he's a power forward with skill. That's just so tough to deal with in a best of seven over and over and over and over again. And they got Rant, and he's huge too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I have I a hard time betting against Colorado too. So yes. And that's not the I Remember when we talked about the Leafs being a regular season team for a very long period of time when they were winning games like that? That Vancouver just has that feel to me, and I think they're better. And still, yes, <laughs> yeah, good point. Yeah, <laughs> but they got some players out there. Like, I was just trying to think about their D because I'm like, didn't they pick up some players? And then I remembered because I played with them was Phil Peronic, who I don't know why they traded him. I don't know if there was something there that they just didn't like in Detroit. But he's the perfect complement to uh, Hughes over there. And then I was trying to, is Zadorov there? Yeah. Yep. He's yeah. And then um, who's hurt right now from Calgary? They brought in the forward. Oh, um, the uh, big trade, Lindholm? right? Lindholm. Yeah. 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 They got some like, players. I just, yeah, I don't see it. Yeah. Man, they've got a goalie. They've got a goalie too. We'll see. We'll see. I just think I, I, they just don't get any attention. I know. And I know they haven't done anything to get the attention, but boy, are they dominant this year. I'm looking forward to our playoff previews. Yes. Sorry. We'll, uh, we'll skip this and move on. Um, <laughs> also to point out Tim Stutzla back to back 50 assist seasons, as much as we say he looks off or he hasn't played well or whatever, that's only five players in sense history have had back to back 50 assist seasons. Really? Alfie. Uh, okay. Spets, Heatley, Carl, and Tim Stutzla. Yeah. He's he's been he, doing what he did last year. Was it thirty nine he got last year? Thirty nine goals, yeah. Like that's that's tough to repeat. And with the Norris injury, it, it, you I, I knew he was going to take. I didn't. It's easy to say now, but we were both talking. That was going to be tough to follow up. Um, yeah. I I think I still think he's trending in the right direction. Uh, the skating, the the skill. People say that he gets too emotional. I like that. I, I like that he cares. I like that he competes. Um, I think I th- this kid's on the right track. Like I, I j- just watch what happens this summer. Right, very good chance this team's going to make the right move. They're, they're going to go into the draft, do some moves, bring in some guys to insulate, and make it make this a tougher team to play against. So your your top players don't have to you know, always go against the other team's top D just get a little deeper and get some guys in the right positions. That's going to happen. And I think when that happens, it'll insulate guys like Stutz more. I agree with that completely. It's a big, it's arguably the biggest year in, well, I don't, I don't know how far I want to predate that. So it's, it's, a, it's the biggest year off season that I can remember last year was, big you know, two years ago when we made some splashes and you went out and got the cat and did this and that and everybody was on the up and up but i think this year there's going to be a ton of optimism heading into it uh yeah. because the people that are in charge right now are going to pull the right triggers and bring the right people in yeah finally they, they, finally they're not they're not going to go target soft mm. goal scoring wingers not that tarasenko soft but like they're not no. like they're not going to trade for like the cat and give up a first round pick with yeah. no plan. Seventh overall first round pick, by the way. Yeah, that one leaves a mark. But that yeah. that was just that was just idiotic. Like is that one worse than the Dadanov one? Well, well, yeah, because that's a whole other show. I want because I want to go get show. way more factual. I want to go get way more factual and do that show in the summer when 
while he's fair enough up for ideas and we're going to talk about it. i'm like we're we have are we contractually obligated to talk about anything it's june I still, <laughs> yes I, we are i i still think one of the worst moves ever and nothing against matthew shane he's a good player i still think that's one of the worst ever that whole debacle we were right. excited in the room but a couple of us were like well why like, because he blew up the rest of the team. <laughs> like, yeah. We were losing guys left, right, and center. <laughs> um, so, yeah, a lot of us were like, oh, I guess that's the thing we're going to do. So, But um, just but think about this for a sec, Bob. They could have traded Turris to Nashville and kept that first-round pick that they had to give up for Duchesne, who would have been Bowen Byron, fourth overall. And Why are we doing? Don't bring this. Don't start this. Now. And they could have got Sam Gerard. So you could have got Gerard <laughs> and Bowen Byram. Wait, so now we have this. Now we have five left-handed defensemen that play the same way. Perfect. Yeah, I know. I know. But still, it's <laughs> just crazy. Like again, like oh, yeah. piece of candy. Shiny Moving piece on. Of candy. <laughs> Summer show. <laughs> I I need to give you guys more instruction or more direction maybe that's what it is maybe <laughs> Graham, <laughs> Graham, yeah. Graham says uncle no more well you know yeah. what the nerd reports have taken a serious down tick now we just get the boards because he i think yorkie went without reading them for so long yeah. um, <laughs> that while he's like I'm, I'm done and sometimes the show has to fly off the handle and i'll just have to accept it yeah i'm like you know what here's Here's what should be in the show. You guys do some work around the, what the boards are. <laughs> That's a I'm not doing the work on the podcast. And then I'm like, damn it, they still haven't done the work. You need a day off soon. I'm ready to host one. I can't wait. This show wow. is this show is better when it's off the rails and we just ad lib. Trust me, people want it. They need Very true. It, and we're gonna give it to them. <laughs> Uh, okay. Well, we'll be back tomorrow with some structure and then I'll five minutes in and it'll be gone. I can't. But, I've, been, I've been saving a great guest for the time you're off air while I say you just tune in and you see the <laughs> <laughs> Just to piss too. you off. I've got all my good ones waiting to love as soon as Wait, what? Uh, 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 just a reminder one last time. Uh, we just want you to go and uh, I'm giving away a free Wally, salty Wally t shirt. So uh, just go to our Twitter account or tag us or add us, whatever it is. I'm coming in hot. We'll pick a winner tomorrow. And then we're giving away more stuff tomorrow. I might even add, you know what? In today's thing, I will add a Chris Neal banner, the retirement jersey banner. Uh, that, yep. So I like it. I like it. And by the way, is it Clark MacArthur will come on if I no. don't do the show? <laughs> no, no. Okay. I wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> uh, Danny Heatley? Yep. Nope. Okay. No. Okay. You know what else we're going to auction off? That tarp of a sweatshirt you gave me, the triple extra large coming in hot sweat, triple XL. I saved I that thing for my sauna days. <laughs> <laughs> it's good because I, didn't I can give pull it, it all to you. down to my ankles and cover up in sweat. <laughs> I, okay. All right. Uh, until tomorrow, gentlemen, go enjoy your afternoons. Uh, right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I'm sorry for what you had to sit through. Uh, see ya. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to Coming In Hot. If you enjoyed the show, hit that like button and be sure to subscribe to never miss an episode. 